Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. G'day, everybody. Where's Wally here? Well, today we're going to have a little bit of fun with Gigantor. Let's see what sort of super fantastic fantasies he can make up for us today. I invite you to don your tinfoil hat and join me in a conspiracy theory fueled foray into map projections and a look at air currents around the Earth or across the flat Earth and how we can be uh, deceived into perceiving or believing that we live on a globe because of these various projections. We're also going to have a look at a claim by an anti-flat earth pilot who's a prolific poster of videos and he's recently made some claims uh, that the Utvost effect is somehow caused by us being on a spinning globe earth. <laughs> We're looking at these projections because obviously they're all based on uh, a predetermined uh, point of reference or two predetermined points of reference, the two poles basically, the north and the south poles. So uh, everything uh, from those two points is then uh, created with uh, this distortion of the longitude and latitude and equatorial lines here so um, you know just just playing around with this is is, is a good way to see how uh, the uh, the geometry and trigonometry or the angles and everything that have been uh, used to create these projections can be the reason I'm really pointing this out is that uh, there is something missing from this and that is the azimuthal equidistant projection from the North Pole. Uh, we, we've been through all the projections here. Uh, now what's uh, interesting about this is that this website used to feature an azimuthal equidistant projection from the North Pole. And uh, as uh, Flat Earth gained popularity since uh, let's say around 2015, obviously it was, it was gaining popularity way before then, but uh, it seemed to reach a bit of a, 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 a uh, but uh, obviously very, very curious that uh, this particular projection, one that's obviously uh, very popular with uh, researching Flat Earth, has now gone missing from this educational tool. So let's have a look at some claims made by someone who firmly believes that we live on a globe. Uh, we're going to have a look at this video by Wolfie6020, who claims to be a pilot, and he's a prolific poster of globe-defending videos. Um, oh, hang on a second, Nick. You think Wolfie only claims to be a pilot? No, he most definitely is a pilot, and you very much know that, you lying piece of... Whatever. Very much dislikes the flat Earth, or any idea that deviates from the belief that we live on a globe. <laughs> In general, Wolfie likes to claim that he knows we live on a globe um, because that's the way he uh, navigates across the Earth when making flight plans to plot a course from one place to another. Uh, but really, this is just a case of using the Haversine formula, which is uh, related to spherical geometry. <laughs> Again, he's using uh, the Haversine formula to make his uh, flight plans because he has to use spherical geometry based on the longitude and latitude lines which are uh, created from these two different poles, the North and the South Pole. So really, if you're going to uh, make a flight plan for a flat Earth, then you, you can't... So you can do quite a lot with um, this kind of projection. You can tell the time and, and it works as far as uh, projections, any other projection goes. And you're going to have to use spherical geometry. And so you would use the have assigned formula to uh, go from one place to another. And again, the claim is that he's verifying the Earth's rotation with the Ertvos effect and an experiment uh, and he's making he's claiming that this is the kind of experiment that flat earthers are afraid to try 
There, there is no denying uh, that you would get these results going uh, east to west and then no denying that these other kind of results you would get and uh, there's no denying that you would actually end up flying uh, faster going west to east than you would going east to west and this would in fact give you a difference in in the weight and here is his proof in a nutshell for the Edfoss effect not being real it is hold your hats because you know if you're flying faster then you're going closer to the speed that of the downward acceleration of the weight so yeah what the whatever uh, because uh, if you know if you're flying faster then you're going closer to the speed that uh, of the downward acceleration of the weight so uh well nick that is pure unadulterated word salad because we all know speed of the acceleration makes absolute no sense so whatever you're trying to say it's all word salad for your gullible followers yes that whatever that would weigh less. the weight would be less if you were flying faster while carrying that weight you're kind of uh, compensating uh, against this downward force of the weight by going faster well hang on nick compensating against the downward weight force by going faster and producing an outward going force sound and the sound a bit like you're describing an ethos effect there or some sort of centripetal or some sort of centrifugal force i think that's exactly what you're describing mate whatever but is that really due to uh us flying above a spherical earth Yay, let's watch PW do some gymnastics of his own. Uh, well, uh, uh, not really. This is just a claim or an interpretation that is made from these results. Gymnastics indeed. Because when we look at what would directly influence this difference in speed going west to east, we can see that there is a jet stream. Well, let me just hold you there for a second, Nick. You know, what you didn't do, but I, well, not me, Wolfie did do, is actually look at the speed traveling in east and west direction. So when they were going uh, east, they were traveling at 550 knots and traveling west, they were traveling at 430 knots. Now, what you didn't look at was that the speed is proportional to the magnitude of the difference. But the direction into which they are traveling around the earth corresponds to the sign of the direction as in is it positive or negative is it more or less now you didn't recognize that because in your model if it was true that it was just the speed you should see a similar increase in both directions whether it's traveling east or traveling west and what you also failed to do which wolfie did was he went north and south as well just as a secondary points and of course, when you're traveling north and south, there is very little difference shown in this effect. So, oops. Whatever. Uh, here is what someone like Wolfie as a pilot will know. Uh, model it with zetetic astronomy. Oh, zetetic astronomy, zetetic weather. Zetetic anything is kind of bound to be really funny to watch and have absolutely no science in it at all. That has the sun doing smaller or larger circles throughout the year, as well as uh, gaining height above the earth in order to create that difference in temperature. <laughs> And then you take off from the Earth and you, okay, so we're assuming that the, the atmosphere is stuck to the Earth and there's no difference from being on the ground and being in the air. I kind of feel that um, Gigantor is trying to make a bit of a straw man here, saying that you cannot have an atmosphere stuck to the Earth because winds are blowing. I think you need to learn a little bit more how this works, Nick. He also claimed in this video that Flat Earth researchers refused offers of free flights. I'm one of those uh, flat earth researchers that uh, Wolfie offered a, a, a flight to quite uh, a few years ago and uh, at the time I didn't accept the offer for a, a few good reasons. My wife was about to give birth 
uh, at any time. So it wasn't a good time for me to go gallivanting around uh, just to, to kind of go and see that Australia exists or that the stars uh, look different in Australia than they do uh, north of the equator or whatever. So um, that's why I refused. Plus, I had no idea who Wolfie was. He's never shown his face in his videos. I don't know his real name. Oh, and now you're saying, Nick, that no one's seen his face? Well, you certainly have. Wolfie sent you pictures ages ago. And of course, there was one just posted online yesterday, but I'm not going to tell you where that is. You have to go and find it because you're such a giant in the research facility. I'm sure you can find it. Whatever. Uh, none of that information has been forthcoming in the, the years he's been doing these uh, flat earth debunking videos. And uh, so uh, there would, there's no reason for me to just hop on a, a free flight with someone I, I don't know just to go and see uh, Australia. So Nick, you're telling me that you're too scared to take a paid flight on a public carrier just because someone else has paid for it. I don't really see what the risk is in that, Nick. It sounds a bit weak. Whatever. A long time ago, uh, I did my own experiment here. We can see uh, this was back in 2017, okay, when I had the chance to do it. Uh, I used a spirit level app in my phone and flew 10,000 kilometers from Phuket. Here I'm just showing how to calibrate the, the phone on, on, on a slope and how the phone will remember uh, the, the angle or uh, that it was uh, uh, calibrated at. So I flew from Phuket to London and um, we can see that here I am in uh, uh, Phuket Airport. Okay, I'm calibrating the phone there. I put it on the floor, reset the thing just to show that uh, I've put it on the level. So, of course, if we are living on a globe, then uh, and I'm flying from the equator up to the UK, then the phone would be something like that uh, on, on or near the equator. And uh, then by going up north, uh, we should see a difference in uh, the, the level of the spirit level. So there I am leveling it on the floor and uh, I, I stopped off in, uh, okay, we can see here, horizontal level recalibrated on the flat floor in Phuket. So calibrated it on the floor in Phuket. So it was level on the floor in Phuket, which if we're on a globe should be like that. And then I got to Dubai. I had another look there and uh, basically got the same results. It was still level in Dubai compared to Phuket and eventually arrived at uh, the UK. And we, uh, again, uh, after measuring this, we got the same horizontal level in London compared to the level calibrated in Phuket. So there was no change in level. Now, of course, the explanation here is that gravity somehow pulls you around and you would not see a difference in level. But this was basically an attempt to see if it was possible to set up this phone uh, and, and the, the Spirit Level app in the phone to record a difference in uh, what would have been different levels <clears throat> or a difference in the direction that the phone would be if it was on the floor in Phuket and on the floor in, in, in the UK. So the attempt was made there to see if curvature could be found and there was no evidence of curvature whatsoever. The level was the same all in all the destinations. All we have is an explanation as to why we would not see this difference. So there is no fear in doing these experiments and there is no ignorance of the results that we would get. There is simply the ability to look at it and assess all the conditions involved. Well, it just seems that Nick spends a whole heap of time just trying to show us that planes move faster when the air around them is also moving faster. Well, Captain Obvious, that's a big derp. Oh, and just in case you've forgotten, Nick, um, the Himawari 8 is the best, second best debunker of the flat earth yet. Second only to the ISH, which kills the flat earth every single time. Now, one thing, uh, if you're talking about being scared of doing tests, one very, very simple test I have uh, suggested to people such as, as Wolfie who have the resources and the time and the money to do this is something like this. With a drone or an aircraft <clears throat> is to uh, 
uh, fly straight and level. Uh, use the artificial horizon or do it any way you uh, feel possible if you're a pilot or a drone pilot uh, to fly straight and you wouldn't have to fly very far. You could fly uh, 2 miles, 10 miles, 20 miles and see if by flying straight there is a difference in the altitude from where you started. Obviously best to do this across water or uh, uh, earth or land that you know isn't uh, changing in elevation too much. But uh, this would be a very simple test that someone with a drone and a camera could do or with access to an aircraft could do. Now lastly, Nick, of course you've got your pet little drone theory here. You could just go and do it yourself, you know. Or how about you just think of it this way. So where the observer is standing on the shore, clearly they're not underwater. Now if a drone was flying straight away from their head at eye, you know, in a line straight towards, let's say, the horizon there in front of that first boat. So he's going straight down, straight down, down towards the horizon, just about touches the water and then keeps going straight. Where is it going to end up? It's now doing what you all were trying to do with your drone experiment. And you can see that it's going to get higher and higher because it's now going to pass over the top of the second boat. And that boat is much, much higher than the keel of the first boat is in the water, isn't it? So there's your experiment all in a nutshell, mate.